Today we're going to be looking at the Roland TB303 baseline. Uh, if you've just picked up one of these things, it's going to be pretty daunting at first. I remember when I first got mine, um, it was um, yeah, it's quite difficult to understand what's going on. So I'm going to break this down for you, and uh, hopefully, if you uh, follow the steps carefully that I do, then uh, you'll be programming this thing in minutes. So um, let's just uh, have a look at the basic features: track and pattern. In the, in the modes that you've got, track should be considered your sequencer. So let's just leave that alone for now. We'll come back to that. Let's get some patterns in here, uh, and you do that by putting your mode into pattern right. And then what you do is you have a look at the pattern groups. So the Roman numerals are the groups. You've got four groups um, to put it basically. Uh, the solid colors are for track uh, memory locations. So let's just use um, pattern group numeral one. Uh, your pattern should be flashing. If it's not, you might have something plugged in via sync. Um, so disconnect whatever you've got just for uh, the purpose of this demonstration. And uh, what you should also consider or keep in mind is that you've got um, patterns A and B. So you've got eight, eight memory locations. Uh, you've got two memory areas. So each uh, memory location is one bar with with uh, 16 steps. So, and uh, if you want to clear that and start it from a, a new palette, hold down the pattern clear, and then hold down uh, pattern one, and you should see pitch mode A sharp and time mode all solidly glowing red, and uh, that's sort of letting you know that it's running the memory arrays uh, function. So now if you hit play, you shouldn't hear anything. Uh, so this little button here on the bottom left is your run, play, and stop. So you can't hear anything. When it's red, it's on, playing, but it's not. We haven't got anything. Uh, so what we want to do is put it into pitch mode. Pitch mode then enables this little keyboard here uh, to, become, to come alive. And then what you should also consider is you've got transpose. So if you pretend there's three of these little keyboards, you can actually access the notes on them just by using these transpose up and down buttons. So uh, for argument's sake and uh, for display purposes, let's just start with middle C. Just adjust that tone there. All right, so now let's uh, go back to the start of that Make it bar again. So the way you do that is hit the function, back to normal mode, then back to pitch mode. Going back into pitch mode will reset you back to the first step of your one bar. So, and if you hit this enter key, you'll hear that note, uh, which is the first step of the 16 steps in that location. So the next note I want is this. And then the one after that I want is that. And, oops, that hit twice. So you'd hold down the back button there and hit right next. And that'll, instead of advancing to the next step, that'll sort of bring you back to that double hit note which is due to the fact that these buttons have been bashed by the previous owner um, so if you have that issue just hold down back and hit right next and that just won't advance it doesn't it's not multiple so it won't keep going back and back and back so just consider that you know these are old units so all that does is stop you from going forward um, so then the next note I want after that will be A sharp and then C and then lower C so dan trans transpose down, hold it, hit your note, uh, transpose up. Um, now back to normal mode, back to pitch mode. Now let's listen back to the notes that we hit. And you do that by hitting your right next button. So what I want to do is go back to the start. Take the transpose off so you can do that. Just remember this note. So, normal mode, pitch mode. Alright, that should be good. So, now we can go to the time mode and put in some timing for that particular riff. And now the, you've got step, you've got a tie, and you've got a rest. Now, the way they work is each one of them acts as a position in the 16 steps. So if each one of these bars is broken into 16 steps, then this is going to put us at 
say position one of those 16 steps and so if I did 16 of these it's just basically going to do an arpeggiator so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 and then it takes you out of time mode to let you know that there's no more steps in that memory location so let's just play alright so now what we can do is because that's 16th um, I can hear a few things that I don't want. So I'm going to go back to pitch mode. I don't want the slides. Take that off. Take that off. So now when you play it, there's one more little slide in there, but I won't worry about that because I'm going to get rid of that with some new timing in a second. But what I will show you is just the uh, accent. So if I apply accent on every note and there's that slide there but anyway now all of those notes have got accent on them so this your accent knob will now actually make a difference so play it apply some uh, accent and it gets quite aggressive so you can adjust the uh, level of accent that you like alright so what we want to do now is actually get some more timing different timing happening so go back to time mode and now what I want to do is show you what the rest and ties do uh, the rest and the step uh, sorry yeah rest and ties basically so instead of uh, hitting step I'm going to yeah, I'll use one step, but I'll use a, t uh, a rest. So step and rest, step and rest, step and rest. And now it should act more like an eighth note arpeggiator. So those notes are short and there's little gaps everywhere. So what we want to do now is instead of using rests, which is more like a gap, um, we want to use a tie. So what it does is it drags the note. And the way you do that is go back to time mode, hit the step, hit the tie, hit the step, hit the tie, hit the step, hit the tie, and hit the tie a couple of times. And well, what the hell, one more, hit a couple more steps. And then that 16 step location, I guess memory location, is now complete. It's automatically thrown us out of time mode and put us back to normal mode, so let's have a listen now and see what that sounds like. Alright, now let's put some slides in there. So back to pitch mode, step through. Uh, what I want is a quite a dramatic slide, so something that's higher. There we go. So normal mode and then play. Can't really hear much of our slides. I think they're too far up the back. So let's try that. now they're more noticeable and uh, one other thing I'll show you just quickly as well the alternative to punching in time like that because um, that's probably the worst way to do it so what we'll do is hit play and now you're uh, just let me adjust this tone so you can hear me telling you what to do what you can do now is uh, hit the bar reset button and that becomes a, uh, a metronome and now what's now what now what it wants you to do uh, is you can punch in the timing with the next button which becomes a tap button so you can see the word tap on there and the down tone is the start of the bar and you just adjust the tempo
So there's um, some better timing uh, that probably is more human. But um, what we can do is actually just go back and get it. So if you make a mistake, you can just keep applying it. So just hit that uh, the bar reset button while it's playing. Alright, so for uh, demonstration purposes, we're going to need one more pattern. So let's go to pattern 2 um, and let's clear it. Quickly put in some notes. So let's play those back. Yep, that's fine. Now let's just put some time in. put some uh, accents in, so pitch mode alright, and uh, so you can keep coming back over your patterns you can apply different times or different pitches to them. If you don't clear the pattern, uh, you can basically keep coming back and changing them until, until you know, forever basically, until you run, run out of batteries or whatever. So um, what we want to do now is, because we've got the two patterns, is we, we want to go to uh, our sequencer and put them in a particular order and make a little four bar loop out of it. And so what we can do now is put this into track write mode um, or what I should do is quickly just show you pattern play mode because when you're playing this essentially what we can do now is audition what we've made and swap by playing we can actually push the memory locations and you can transpose it by holding down pitch and hitting the note that you want to transpose the key into. And let's go to the other memory location. And you can see how they stay solid until they start playing. That's telling you that they're going to they wait and they're going to wait until the previous pattern has reached its 16th step and then it's going to come in once your previous pattern has um, finished so it's kind of kind of handy in that respect most people probably just play play live in pattern play but um, but what we want to do now is actually play those patterns in a sequence so you do that by putting uh, your 303 into track write mode and then once you've done that uh, always click this bar reset button when it's not playing um, it's a good way of doing things um, it just always make sure you're at the start and not somewhere in the middle because if you're in the middle and you start programming and you come back to play it later on you're going to wonder where all that work of yours is and it could be anywhere uh, so bar reset and then play and then uh, you can select which uh, which key you want your pattern to play in just by holding down pitch mode so let's start at high C just for the demonstration and then hit right next and now this will move into the second bar and we'll put one there and then the next one up at transpose it transpose it to actually D sharp so we know where we're at and we listen back Write that in by hitting the right next button. And now what we'll do is use the pattern that we did at memory location 2. And that will be the fourth bar. So I want that to end our uh, sequence or our track. So hit uh, bar reset or DC, the DC button, and that'll tell the 303 
that there's nothing else after this memory location, which is bar 4, that we want to hear. So it'll just loop back to the start. So hopefully it doesn't make a liar out of me. Let's play it. So that's the uh, four bars. Um, and just some other small advice on the uh, 303. That's the sync in, um, not MIDI, DIN. It's only only a clock, it doesn't pass on note information. So only old drum machines like 808s and 707s will be able to plug into that if your uh, 303 is unmodified. Um, if you've got a, a clone or a something else, it might be completely different. Uh, the mix in is a quarter inch uh, audio input uh, that can be used to plug in another drum machine or a synth and all it does is send the output uh, to the 303's main out so uh, it's kind of good I guess if you're busking but that, or something like that that's probably why they're handy um, you can run this off a 9 volt battery otherwise you can use a DC 9 volt transformer um, you've got control voltage which is CV and gate so anything that's playing gets sent out note information and the uh, gate information will be sent out of there so that's uh, they're good for old synthesizers and things to um, to mimic and copy what's, what's playing in here when you're playing it uh, and then you've got your two waveforms, your sawtooth and your square wave which I'll give you a demonstration of Alright, and that's the end of the 303 basic feature tutorial. Thanks for watching.